Good morning guys and welcome to Medellin, Colombia. Okay, we've been here for a couple weeks already and in this video I want to give you my first impressions of living in Medellin, being in Colombia and just generally what you can expect from living and working in this city. Now some of you will know that this used to be known as one of the most dangerous cities and countries in the world. Going back to the drug problems, gang warfare, Pablo Escobar, all of that, it has a reputation of being a dangerous city to live in. But I think that's completely changed and that's what I want to show you a bit of in this video. Because we've already been here for a few weeks and not once have I felt in trouble or in danger and actually I think it's become one of the coolest places to work in the world and one of the most livable cities in the world as well. So that's what I've experienced over the last few weeks and that's what I'm going to try and show you right now. We're now about to enter La Comuna 13, which for any of you that have been to Colombia or Medellin might know that it was once one of the most dangerous places on earth and certainly the most dangerous neighborhood in Colombia. Now it's completely different. I'm going to show you now the, the juxtaposition between what you might have thought of about Colombia and how it is now. One of the most popular things to do here is the free walking tour and you can do it in a bunch of different languages. We're doing one in English and it's basically just a way of walking through La Comuna 13 and learning about the history of it. We just learned, first of all, that this has been occupied by a lot of different guerrilla and paramilitary groups and that was one of the reasons it was so dangerous in the past. The army and the government have done a lot of fighting here against those guerrilla groups and also they were hiding out here to facilitate their making money off the drug trade but that was all the way up until 2008 and then after 2008 it's turned into what you can see in front of me. So one of the main themes of Communa 13 is there are murals and graffiti everywhere and we just had this one explained to us and I think it's pretty poignant so I'm going to show it to you guys. Okay so you've got the colours of the Colombian flag here which represent the birds carrying the key of freedom to unlock people's brains and you can see from going through the skin that everyone's the same. And the reason that's important is because that's largely what happened here. Once they were given the freedom then they were able to flourish. Okay, so our guy just treated us to one of the ice creams here and I got a mango one. Comes in a plastic cup. It's good though, got proper bits of mango in. Hey, how do yes. you like it, Biff? Oh, I haven't tried oh, it yet. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. We should go for passion fruit. Uh, mm -hmm. I went for mango. It's and good. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Cheers. Mm. It's Ooh. refreshing. It's nice. I like it. Yeah, mm. good. It's very good. Mm. things this area is well known for is the escalators which can take you right up to the top of the neighborhood without having to do the stairs. So we're right at the top now and it is fully lined with tourist stalls, restaurants and bars. I think that just kind of shows like it used to be one of the world's most dangerous neighborhoods and now it's a complete tourist hotspot. I think it emphasizes the change that's happened in Colombia in a relatively short amount of time. Whereas before there was a lot of gangs and drugs and problems, now it's a real international place where lots of people are coming to live and work and like also just coming for holidays in somewhere like here. Abuela. 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 This is good. Right. Good? Mm. Mm. Sweet. So this here, where it looks like a mine or a quarry, 
is also South America's largest mass grave. It's because that's where there was a lot of fighting before between the paramilitary groups and if they accidentally hit someone or killed someone they buried them there and there's still a lot of bodies buried there now as well and they're uncovering them all the time. And bear in mind this wasn't that long ago I think they only discovered it in 2015 and the fighting was still well into early 2000s. Okay, we just finished up the tour and it was really interesting. The guy just at the end told us that he spent two years in a paramilitary group and that's why it actually means quite a lot to him now that this has transformed into a completely different place because he saw the other side of it has now seen how the city and how Colombia has changed. And I think this, this tour and this area is kind of symbolic of that. That's what I've tried to show you in this video as well, like the difference of how it was compared to how it is now. And that brings me to the other side of Medellin, which is Poblado. And now this is where most digital nomads, most remote workers and tourists come to stay. It's really green and full of cafes and bars. We're actually staying here for a month with a company called Wi-Fi Artists, which I'm gonna tell you about it in a little bit. For now, I'm just gonna show you some of the streets. We're gonna grab some lunch, and then we're gonna head back to our apartment where we're staying for the next month. This area is Parque Leras and it gets absolutely full of bars later. Everyone out on the chairs all around here. Health and safety. I've got to say one thing I do love about this side of the city is one, how green it is everywhere. And I know it's quite touristy gentrified compared to a lot of the rest of Colombia, but there are so many good food options. There's so many healthy options, there's so many bars, and that kind of makes it really attractive to anyone that wants to come here for remote working. Now this area is also a little bit more expensive than the rest of the city, because I mean, understandably, where most of the tourists go is usually gonna be higher prices, but still, it's not high compared to most other countries, and most meals you can get for less than $10, usually more around $5 and $10 including drinks, which is pretty great, especially if you're working and you have, you know, you have disposable income because you're working online and you can spend your money here. It works out really well. So with that in mind, we're heading for lunch. Okay, this will do. So a quick idea of the prices in a nicer area. Americano is like one pound, one dollar fifty. Um, you've got like, I mean that's more expensive for a beer, normally like two dollars, one pound fifty around here. Cocktails, eight dollars. And then, but we're not going for any of that because we're getting lunch. Pizza for six pound. Pasta, six, seven pound. To be honest, this menu is a little pricier than the other ones we've been to, but it's generally about right. Like, generally less than $10 per dish. Okay, I've got a guandolo, which is coffee mixed with lemon and ginger. Which, to be fair, I know this is a slightly different coffee, but Colombian coffee is a huge thing. And that's been, I mean, great to have every day, because I love coffee anyway. And then you're getting locally sourced, locally produced Colombian coffee. That's really nice. On the cocktails. No, I <laughs> <laughs> nice. It looks like it, it's just watermelon and soda. Okay, this looks good. You get what you pay for. That looks really nice. Yeah. One provincial. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, yours is bigger than mine. That's pretty good. Nice traditional Colombian smoked salmon bagel. Yeah, that was nice. And yeah, I guess one of the things here is you can get like international food everywhere, which is pretty cool. Right, now we're heading back to the apartment we just checked into where we're staying for the next month. And I wanna show you that first. I'm gonna, I also need to mention that I'm staying here with 
Wi-Fi artist and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later in the video but right now I'm going to go show you our apartment. Okay we have just arrived to our place for the next month. Look at that. <laughs> okay this is cool. We have a spiral staircase and also this view over Medellin. Wow, this is nice. Nicer than I expected even. I didn't really know what to expect, but this is very, very nice. Uh, the cool thing is like we're only sharing this whole place with, I think, three other bedrooms. And, you know, I've worked with, oh, where are you? I've worked with Selena before and I stayed for a month with them and all the rooms are very samey but I think what they're trying to do here is find like different properties for you to stay in and cool different unique places and this is definitely one. We've got the top view, the 10th floor and an epic view over Medellin in Poblado, the best area and wait check out the room as well. Oh, our spiral staircase, here we go, huge double bedroom and another balcony with this. I think I'm gonna like this for a month. And now where the magic happens with the toilet, but also the shower and a bath. It's like having a second bedroom. Te gusta? Si. So we've just checked in, but we are gonna be here for the next month. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna use this common area as well as the co-working space that we have a subscription to to use whenever we want. But it's gonna be cool. I think we're gonna try and do a mix of working here and going out and doing some cool things in Medellin and around Colombia. Okay, I'm back on the balcony now and I'm gonna take this chance to tell you a little bit about Wi-Fi artists. Now, the idea is it's a collection, a community of remote workers and digital nomads traveling together around the world and getting to see new places, a new country each month while building genuine connections. So we're here for a month and this is one of the first destinations they've done. But then if you wanted to sign up longer, you can then travel together and go to a new country in a new part of the world every month. I'm going to include all the information in the link in the description below. But the idea is if you wanted to travel with them for four months, you can. If you wanted to travel with them for a year, you can. You get a lot of support, you get picked up from the airport, you get your transfers and you get to start out your journey of being a digital nomad in the right way and doing it with other people collaborating working together and discovering new places together like i said we're here for a month and this way of traveling is a little bit newer to me because i've, I've been doing this for a while and doing it on my own but i do like that these things exist now and if you're thinking about getting into this way of life then it's a lot less daunting to do it with a group of people that some have done it before and some are new to it as well so you can get experience off of some people and the others you can learn together and i like that i like that these things exist so i'm happy to be a part of it honestly better than me explaining just go click the link in the description below and you'll see what it's all about So this is our co-working space in Selena, and we get this for the whole month as well. We've got our own little private office there, and then it's actually a pretty huge Selena, and it's pretty good to work from. I've been here almost every day while working, because I kind of like in a co-working space how you can just like get your head down, have a desk, and blast out work. I think when I'm in a cafe I get too distracted, but having a co-working space is really useful. And this is my little desk. Type, 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 type. And this is the garden area of the Selena. And here are some of the Wi-Fi artists. It's actually really nice to have the co-working in there and then also have this area which is a bit lighter and you can meet up with people too. Actually, that's been the cool thing about Medellin. We've been here for a few weeks already and it seems like there's a lot of people doing the digital nomad remote working thing. So as soon as you finish working, there's loads of people to meet up with, go out with and do some cool things. Like I'm trying to show you in this video. Learning in 
Wi-Fi artist flats and more Spanish for our month here in Colombia. I still need to work on my Spanish. <laughs> I'm getting there. Overall first impressions of Medellin, Colombia and Colombia in general so far. Having been here for a couple weeks now, I completely understand the appeal of living and working here. It's a really genuinely easy place to be. I mean, having Spanish is much better and I am actively trying to learn more Spanish all the time because it does enhance your experience, but you can still get around with English, not too bad. See, I can't even talk it and it's fine. But you can like, you can get by and that's absolutely fine. And generally people here are very friendly and welcoming and accommodating. I think the traditional idea or the reputation Colombia had is quickly disappearing because it is a very welcoming, great country to be in and travel around. Besides just being here in Medellin, we have done a little, quite a few trips around the country now, which I'm gonna show you in this series as well. But I just wanted to do this video about Medellin independently for people that are thinking about coming to live and work from here, remote work from here, digital nomad, whatever. But yeah, really a great place. One of the best places in the world that I've been to to live and work and great for a budget too. So yeah, first impressions, it's been a great first couple of weeks and I'm gonna show you more as this series goes on. We've already made a couple of other videos and they'll be going out soon. So if you do wanna see them, then remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell and all that all that YouTube stuff and I'll see you in the next video for now thank you for watching and see you again soon turned her into an influencer guys <laughs>